to the stories making headlines on Capitol TV. A Kenyan court convicted three men on Monday for the brutal gang rape of a schoolgirl, boosting their original punishment of cutting grass to 15 years in jail. Worldwide outrage over the punishment prompted more than 1.8 million people to sign an online petition demanding justice. The then 16-year-old victim, known by the pseudonym Liz, was reportedly attacked, beaten, and then raped by six men as she returned from her grandfather's funeral in western Kenya in June 2013. The gang dumped her bleeding and unconscious in a deep sewage ditch. She suffered a broken back caused either by the beating or by being hurled down into the pit, as well as serious internal injuries from the rape. Other suspects are on the run, with the public prosecutor ordering they be apprehended and brought to justice without any further delay. Standard Group CEO Sam Cholet has questioned the omission of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Chairman Isaac Hassan's name from the confidential dossier of public officials being investigated by the anti-graft body over corruption allegations. Cholet said it was suspect that former interim independent electoral commission and energy cabinet secretary Davis Chirchir and former IEBC deputy CEO Wilson Cholet are being investigated over alleged failure to comply with procurement law in procuring the electronic voter identification devices, yet Hassan, who was at the helm of both agencies, has been spared. According to UK prosecutors, the two Smith and Osman directors paid bribes, codenamed Chicken, in communication with their local agent to the defunct IBC officials to influence the award of tenders to the printing firm. Sholay has further denied claims by EACC boss Mumu Matemu that he threatened him if he pursued investigations on his wife Gladys Sholay during their tenure as a chief registrar of the judiciary. He admitted to contacting Matemu, but only to ask him to conduct proper investigations instead of engaging in witch hunt against his family. Look at the judiciary. Mutunga was a junior officer at Ford Foundation, a program officer for many years, supervising two to three people. Then he was, then when his boss, the Nigerian, left, he was made the boss for two years, supervising less than 15 people. We made him give justice. But perhaps we should blame Hamid Nasir. He knows what he did to install Mr. Mutunga as Chief Justice. Today, Mutunga is busy fighting shadows, destroying and disrupting lives. And guess what? Kenyans will wake up one day to find that we lost many, many years to reform that institution and are miles backward from where we were before the new constitutions. Mr. 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 Mutunga should not be anywhere near the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. Mr. Sholei, a brilliant leader and manager was shielding his weaknesses for many years. And when she was hunted out, his weaknesses manifested. And now he's naked. It's perhaps, it's, it's perhaps the reason why he wants to resign early. The Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers has issued a seven-day ultimatum to the Education Cabinet Secretary, Jacob Kamenyi, to revoke the recently gazetted Basic Education Regulations, failure to which they say they will call for a countrywide strike by teachers. Kupit says it is vehemently opposed to the new regulations which give the Cabinet Secretary authority to hire and fire head teachers, despite opposition by unions and the Teacher Service Commission. The union says it is the mandate of the Teacher Service Commission to oversee the welfare of teachers and the Ministry of Education will be overstepping its mandate if it assumes such powers. Uh, I think uh, we have got a very brief statement in reaction to the behavior of the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. First, uh, you are aware that uh, there are, we have had reservations about his uh, decisions, especially mapped on various issues, ranging from uh, ranking of schools, uh, coming to issues of gazetting school fees, and now he has unilaterally decided to gazet uh, regulations which have not been subjected to consultations. So in this regard, we feel the cabinet secretary is running uh, the ministry as a, a personal kiosk. And we want to say that this is not going to be tenable. And as Kupet, we are not going to accept it. And uh, we must indicate early enough that unless 
he retracts and withdraws this Gazette notice, notice about regulations then, we are not going to take it lying low. And the one thing that we are going to, uh, we are informing him, and that is contained in the letter which we are, uh, we are protested in, is that we are subjecting this country this time round to an industrial action which is against the minister. Capital Group Chairman Dr. Chris Kirubi has received thanks from the County Government of Kiambu for financing the electrification of Getcha Health Center. Kiambu Deputy Governor Gerald Gidinji, who expressed thanks on behalf of the county government, says there should be more public-private partnership to bolster devolution. Kiambu County, upande wa matibabu ni upande muhimu sana leo na tunajua ile kazi iko kwa matibabu hatuwezi kufanya peke yetu tutafanya na serikali kuu tunafanya na makampuni na tunafanya na watu ambao tutafanya tutasaidiana pamoja kama dr chris kirobi Dr. Kirubi, who unveiled a plaque in his honor at the center earlier in the day, has on his part called on county health officials to provide quality services and ensure public resources are properly utilized. The electrification of the health center has enabled it to provide inpatient and maternal services to the 12,000 who reside in Getcha location. Muna dispensa la rinzuri na inatoa madawa kwa watu sio madawa yanachukuliwa na yanaenda kuuzwa mahali pengine Bwana governor hii ni mambo lazima tutunze mali ya wananchi Daktari Really Kenya haiwezi kuendelea kama kila mtu kazi yake amepewa na serikali anaitumia kuji fanya yeye mwenyewe kuwa tajiri lazima tutunze watu tukitunza watu watu watatunza nyinyi and right now we're going to take a quick commercial break but when we return we'll come back and take a look at the world of business EGG Pay is a new service from Nairobi City County aimed at making life easier for residents. You can now pay your parking fees with EGG Pay conveniently with no hassle. No more hide and seek with parking attendants. No more tickets. No more bribes. To pay your parking fee with EGG Pay, first create your e-wallet if you haven't. Dial star 217 hash. Enter your details as prompted and create your e-payment pin. Top up your e-wallet via M-Pesa or Airtel Money using business number 147147 and your phone number as the account number. Finally, you can pay for your parking by dialing star 217 hash. Select two for parking. Select either one for daily. Enter vehicle registration number. Select your closest area number. Select vehicle category. Confirm payment transaction. Confirm your EGG pay pin. Then await a text message for confirmation. The process will take you just five minutes, but will go a long way in making your life easier. For more information, go to epayments.nairobi.go.ke. EGG Pay means your right to expect service. EGG Pay. Malipo kwa urahisi. Airtel Kenya has announced the appointment of Abdallah Kamis to the position of commercial director. Kamis will oversee three functions including customer service, Airtel money and enterprise divisions. Kamis joins Airtel Kenya from Royal Philip Central and West Africa where he was the general manager. And right now we take a look at the losers and gainers at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And now taking a look at the world of sports. Athletics Kenya suspends Rosa Sociotti and Volare Sports for six months after accusing the two Italian and Dutch-based athletic representatives for being responsible for the spike in doping cases. Long-serving Athletics Kenya president Isaiah Kiplagat will in the meantime take a three-month leave from May 1st to campaign for the IAAF vice presidency. He will not return to post should he be elected.
Another story making headlines in the world of sports is from Liverpool winger Raheem Sterling, who's no stranger to the back pages, but once again he made headlines for all the wrong reasons when he was allegedly pictured smoking a shisha pipe. In a photograph released by the Sunday Mirror, the 20-year-old is seen taking a drag from a large orange pipe containing fruit-scented tobacco. Having already irked certain Reds fans for refusing to dedicate his immediate future to Brendan Rodgers' team after being offered the improved contract offer, he could again cut an unpopular figure for putting his health at risk during the fight for a top fourth place in the Premier League. And that's a wrap-up of the day's top stories. I've been your host, Angela Wamboy. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.capitalfm.co.ke forward slash TV.